Praise the Lord. If you could stand to your feet today as we welcome Pastor Paul Brady to come minister in Jesus' name. Well, good morning, everybody. Praise the Lord. If you're on your feet, let's clap our hands for Jesus today. Come on, that should be the biggest clap. That should be the biggest shout. That should be the biggest praise offering. Come on, let them hear at the door. Let's shout praises to Jesus today. Come on, everybody, lift your voice and just give a shout. Come on, let them shout with joy. Amen. I love what the scripture says. Great joy was in the city. I just believe with all my heart, because of what you're doing, because of your leadership, I tell you, great joy is in the city. Could you imagine what Dublin would be like if All Nations Church was not here? I would shudder to think. Thank God for the prayer. Thank God for the, the vision. Thank God for the plan and the purpose of God. And I just believe the best is yet to come. Anybody believe that? Praise the Lord. Look at you. You're growing strong, growing numerically, growing spiritually. And I tell you, it's a joy every time we come back to see these orange seats filling up more and more and more. How many people are looking forward to seeing this building filled? Let me see your hands. Amen. Come on. It's going to be an exciting day when we see that. But I tell you, we're on a journey. And God is moving, and we're moving with us, with Him. Praise the Lord. Amen. While you're on your feet, I'd like to give honor where honor is due, first and foremost, to the Father. Amen. Thank God for sending Jesus. Amen. And Jesus giving us the precious Holy Spirit. Amen. And then to your precious pastors, Pastors John and Joanna Ahern. Come on, let's show our appreciation for them today. Come on, family, you can do better than that. Amen. They are the best, the cream of the crop. Amen. And I'm telling you, I'm very biased. I love them dearly. We love them dearly. On behalf of Carl and myself. Amen. Thank you for having us here. It's always a treat. It's always a treat. Amen. Today we're going to have a lot of fun together as we explore the help of the Father. In Jesus' name. Well, praise the Lord. Turn around and hug somebody's neck this morning. Praise God. Tell them that you love them. Amen. Shake somebody's hand. If you're visiting today, welcome. Praise the Lord. Amen. You're in a good place. Those that are watching and listening online. Amen. Welcome to Dublin, Ireland. Praise the Lord. Amen. And I'm telling you, if you're looking for a good church, you have found one. Praise the Lord. Amen. Just stop right here and uh, God will bless your life. Praise the Lord. I also reiterate and back uh, Pastor John and Joanna for the march today. Uh, we are ministering in Belfast tonight. Or I would have stayed. I didn't know the march was on, but... We're minister in Belfast tonight, but if I hadn't have been, I would have been staying and marching with you because I believe that when we bless Israel, we are blessed. And uh, of course, we're so conscious of the blessing upon this land, upon this island, and we do not want to invoke anything other than that blessing, that great blessing of Almighty God. Can I have a big amen? amen. Praise the Lord. And I always say this, is this is where opinion doesn't matter. Uh, it's what the Word of God says. And uh, whether we're, you know, indifferent, you know, or, you know, really, wow, I really, I don't, I don't care about it all. We really need to get to the stage. It's not really about caring, it's about what the Word of God says. Amen. And really, you're contending for the soul of a nation, and you're contending for the future here. Many, many people have come to this land. Just look at All Nations Church. Amen. How many nations, how many nations are in this church? Over 80 nations that are in this church alone, you can imagine that you've come to a land and you want this land blessed. <laughs> Amen. I tell people that come to America, you, you don't want what went on in your country in America. Amen. You came to America to be free. And there's many people that have come to Ireland to be free. You don't want what was going on in your country happening in this country. Can I have a big amen? Praise the Lord. So I'm just going to speak very briefly this morning. Amen. I'll have you out by the march about 2.30. Praise the Lord. But uh, I know, funny boy. It's just so good to be here with you all. Father, we just, we just bless you. We love you. We just give you praise and honor and glory. We thank you for your precious presence because your presence changes everything. And I thank you for people in this room, those that are watching online, Father God, change is on the way. 
And let us thank you, Father God, that you're with us every step of the way of change, that you take our lives, you make them better, you never make them worse, you always lift us up, you never put us down, you always hold us, you never lose your grip. And tonight we just bless you, or this morning we just bless you. We give you praise and honor and glory. I ask you to bless every person in this room, Father. Let them hear what you're saying. Father, open their ears, open their hearts. Let them hear what the Spirit of God is saying to us in this time. In Jesus' precious name. And everybody shout a big amen. Whoa, whoa. I think the Martians are in the room. Anyway, I want you to go to Hebrews 4, verse 16, please. Hebrews 4, verse 16. I'll do my best with the microphone. If you see it dropping, just tell me to push it back up again. Uh, but Hebrews 4, 16. I want to speak to you about just a little word, and it's a Greek word, and it's a word called Elias. And it's the same word in the Hebrew, and it's hesed. And it's the mercy of God, or it is the ultimate love of God. I believe that there's a demonstration of God's love that is being offered to the world. I believe for those that can hear his voice, you will, in no doubt, be led astray. He will reveal himself to you. He will make himself known to you. And the Spirit of God has been given to us to convey the Father's heart. In John 14, 15, and 16, 15 is beautiful. It talks about he is the vine, we are the branches. That which is in the vine is in the branches. So what is there, ever is in God is in us. 14 talks about, you know, in my Father's house there are many mansions. Jesus goes. He's sending us the Holy Spirit. Amen. We're told 14, 15, and 16 about this precious operation of the Spirit of grace. He's here to help us, comfort us, stand by us, befriend us. In other words, the Father did not want us to be left alone. Do you know that you're not here in Dublin alone? Come on, guys. You're here with the presence of the Father. There's not one day that goes by that you don't have the residence or the evidence of the Holy Spirit working in your life. You see, the Father sent us Jesus. And then between the Father and Jesus, they sent us the precious Holy Spirit. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, all are God. Not one is diminished. And with us right now, we know exactly where the Father is. We know exactly where Jesus is. Some will say, Jesus is in my heart. Yes, he is, by faith and by the work of the Spirit. But he sits at the right hand of the Father, and Scripture tells us in the New Testament that Jesus' job right now is to make prayer or to make intercession for the saints. He sent us the precious Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit came on a job. He didn't come on a rescue mission. He came on a mission to assist the church. Who is the church? The church are those who have accepted Jesus as their Lord and personal Savior. You can say it like this. There are three groups of people on the earth today. I know you could say, well, there's many, many people groups. But scripture only alludes to three people groups. It speaks to the Jew, the church, and the Gentiles. The Jew are, what would you say, the natural line of God's people. God has not replaced them. There is no replacement theology. The Jew has a place in the plan of God. Can I have a big amen? It's very important because if you believe in replacement theology, then it doesn't matter to you what happens to the Jew. But when you realize the Jew's place in the plan of God, then you know it is the responsibility of the church to stand with the Jew, to stand with the Jewish people so that it is well with us. Three groups of people, the Jew, the church. Who is the church? The church are those that have been washed in the blood of the Lamb. Not one of us that are in the church today, I'm talking about the body of Christ, came there by our own decision. We came there by the leading of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit drew us to the Father through Jesus so that we could accept Jesus as our Lord and personal Savior. The moment that we accepted the Lord and uh, Jesus as our Lord and personal Savior, everything changed. Corinthians tells us that we became a new creation all things passed away. All has become new. At that moment, the Spirit of God, amen, come on, did a work, a miraculous work, and caused us to be born again. Then we received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. 
The baptism of the Holy Spirit, amen, is that evidence of the Spirit's work within our lives. It is the empowerment to live this Christian life, not in the flesh, not as natural people, but as God intended us, with all power, with all authority, and with demonstration as God himself can do. Amen. So that is the church. What is the church known as? It's known as the ecclesia. What is this ecclesia? It is the governing authority of God on the earth. So you have the Jew, the group that have never accepted Jesus, but they are still the people of God. Then you have the church. We are the ones that came out of the Gentile group or the Jewish group. Anybody that is a Jew that is drawn by the Holy Spirit can become part of the church group by accepting Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. It's the same as the Gentile group. Who is the Gentile group? The Gentile group are the heathen, are the heathen nations. Those are the ones that have not ever been part of the Jewish company or part of the church as yet. In other words, they have never accepted Jesus as their Lord and personal Savior. So the heathen, guess what? The Spirit of God can go to work on them. And at the bidding of the Father, they can become born again by the Spirit of God. But it is important for us to note that no one can get saved unless the Spirit of the Lord draws them to the Father. Salvation is for all. And that's why we pray. That's why we pray for our families. That's why we pray for our children. That's why we pray for those around us. Why? That all might be saved. That's why you're praying for Dublin. That's why you're praying for this island. That's why you're standing for this nation. So that you can see all men come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. That is particularly upon this work. How many people understand that? For over 30 years, your pastor has stood on the streets of this great city. He doesn't stand on the streets of this great city because he's a pastor and because he's the pastor of All Nations Church. He stood in the streets and preached the gospel before he ever became a pastor. Amen. Why? Because his heart was to see the lost come to know the saving Christ. Can I have a big amen? Amen. He believes that. He's convicted about that. And we stand and celebrate that there's a pastor, a man that we know in this precious, precious nation that gives a hurt where people's going to spend eternity. Aren't you blessed by that today? Even if you're busy on a Saturday afternoon, you can know it, that your pastor and a team of people are on the streets of Dublin telling people that they need to give their lives to Jesus Christ. The Spirit of God is always at work, and your spirit of, the Spirit of the Lord is at work through your pastor. Can you give the Lord a praise offering right now? So why am I saying these things? It's so important because so many people I find do not understand. They just look out there and they see all the many religions, but they don't understand the makeup of the people groups. When you read scripture, you begin to see this makeup very, very clear in everyone's part to play. I believe with all my heart that there is a sweeping move of God that is coming to this nation I believe that your prayers are not falling on deaf ears, but God hears them. He says, cry unto me and I will answer you. I believe that prayer is that force, that power that precedes everything. I believe prayer is the track that we build our road and so that our lives can roll right down into the future unhindered and uninterrupted by opposing and satanic forces. Because of prayer and because of the victory in the name of Jesus, our victory in Christ, we know that we can pray by faith, assured that the answer is on its way. I believe with all my heart that we don't stand alone. Why? Because the Spirit of the Lord is with us. He empowers us. He instructs us. He leads us. He guides us. He tells us what needs to be done and he shows us things to come. There is always an unction. There is always a voice. And it's the voice of the Lord that we follow. And a voice of a stranger we will never. <clears throat> I say this for years and years and years. I bind the spirit of deception. I bind the spirit of seduction. I bind the works of the enemy. I take authority over the opposition of satanic forces. 
And I bring to naught every work of Satan. Pray that every day. Work it every day. Stand in Christ's authority in your life. Don't let life get you down. Know that you're on the victory side. Know that the best is happening and the best is manifesting in your life. You see today, as you take to the streets of Dublin, there's a contending. Know that this is just not a natural fight. This is a spiritual fight. And sometimes we don't think that these things are important. We don't want to be seen. You know, in America, we've been watching our college campuses being absolutely flooded and taken over by people that are protesting against Israel. They're trying to say it's not anti-Semitic, but it is completely anti-Semitic. There is a very ugly spirit that is working behind this. The people that are being paid, they're calling them paid agitators so that they break into these campuses, they incite, and they incite to a place that even people that would never think about doing these things begin to do things that they thought they would never, never do. They find themselves with masks on, and I always say, if you have to hide your face, you shouldn't be doing it. I'm going to say it again. If you have to hide your face, you shouldn't be doing it. If you're really into what you're doing, let everybody see your face. So the very fact that faces are hidden and masks are being worn is a sign to all that there's something not right with this picture. This is not about precious people being hurt. This is about terrorists that are trying to do injustice, ladies and gentlemen. There is a plan and a plan for a land. The land belongs to Israel. You cannot take that up with your pastor. You cannot take that up with me. You cannot take that up with the Jew. You will have to take that up with God himself. It was God who gave the Jewish people the land. It is their land. Can I have a hand offering today onto the Lord in the name of Jesus? Come on, you can clap better than that. So it's important that we say these things. What am I going to talk about today? I'm going to talk about help. I'm going to talk about God's mercy. I'm going to talk about how God always gets involved with us in our lives. You know, you may be living your life and you're thinking, I need a little help. What God gave me years ago was this, that God is among those who will help me. So let's go to Hebrews 4.16 and take a look at this today. Maybe you can put it up on the screen for me, guys, so that we can all see it. Amen. And again, it's just such a great honor to be with you today. And I hope that this is all making sense. I want to know. I want to learn. You know, if I can help in any way, I want to help. How many people believe like that? In verse 16, it says this. Let us then fearlessly and confidently and boldly draw near to the throne of grace, the throne of God's unmerited favor to us sinners, that we may receive mercy for our failures and find grace to help in good time for every need, appropriate help and well-timed help coming just when you need it. Everybody say that with me, just when you need it. Is it coming after? No. It's coming right when you need it. God's intention is that you get help when you need help because he wants to help you. Prayers are not prayers that we pray, hoping that sometime, somewhere, somehow, we will get a breakthrough and that something three years from now will happen that will just rectify everything and sort everything. God's plan is that we come today boldly before his throne and expect because of that word, Elias, mercy, because of that Hebrew word, has said, covenant, love, that we can receive immediate help. Everybody say immediate help. You see, even in the faith world, we've been so programmed, you know, it's by faith. And we're believing by faith. And one day by faith. But yet when you see this verse, this is talking about immediate help coming right when you need it. This is not three years, five years, six years out there. We're coming boldly before the throne of grace to receive help 
now in the name of Jesus. There are people in this room, people listening to my voice. You need help now. You don't need help tomorrow. You need help now. There are areas in your life that you need help with now. There are things in our marriages we need help with now. There are things that are going on in our children that we need help with now. There are things that are going on in our finances that we need help with now. I guess I'm the only one. In the New Living Translation, it says this, So let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. There we will receive his mercy, and we will find grace to help us when we need it most. This is telling me it's an absolute. This is not, I wonder, will God, I, I, I don't know, uh, you know, there's no expectation in a lot of people's lives. And my advice to you today is to get your expectation to a place that you know the scripture says that my expectation will never be cut off. That means that God is working with me. God is working for me. God has gone before me. God is coming behind me. And in the words of St. Patrick, amen, Christ is everywhere. Amen, he's before me, behind me, under, under me and Christ is with us today all these years later 2,000 years after death birth and resurrection of Jesus Christ we have the spirit of the Lord this Holy Spirit that works with us continuously helping us comforting us standing by us amen even when we're at our worst moment and we think that everyone has forsaken us the Holy Spirit is still there he is within us he is upon us the spirit of the Lord God is upon me where is he because of the New Testament and because of the born again experience, we are different to the Old Testament people. We have the spirit of grace, the Holy Spirit himself living in the inside of us. This means we have the guide in the inside and we have this voice within us, ladies and gentlemen. It's terrible. I mean, it really just gets me going in the wrong way when I see believers, Christians acting like they're the same as the rest of the world. We're not the same as the rest of the world. We have received Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. We have received the power of the Holy Spirit. People out there that have not accepted Jesus, they're not the same as you. Stop trying to be the same as them. You're not the same as them. Stop being part of the melting pot. You're not part of the melting pot. Amen. You were called to be a light set on a hill. You were called to be a voice that be heard. What was John the Baptist? Even in the wilderness, a voice crying, amen, prepare ye the way of the Lord. What are we today? We are like the John the Baptist of a modern era. And we are saying, prepare ye the way of the Lord. The Lord is coming. The Lord is near and the Lord is coming soon. I believe it with all my heart. People say, well, you know, they've been saying for years that Jesus is coming. Well, you know, we're closer than what they were. Amen. And we're closer to that day more every day. Every day we get up, we are closer to that day. Jesus is coming and he's coming again and he's coming soon. And we are closer to the end than what anybody ever thinks, ladies and gentlemen. And it's going to be a great day. If you believe us, shout a big amen. Woo! Come on, you got to let people around these areas know that you believe in God. Pastor Paul, man, you're a wild man. You're, you're, I mean, you're just wild. You and Pastor, you and Pastor John are the same. You just shout and, you know, rawr, and and you're, you've always, you know, picking a fight. I, I never chose this, guys. I get up every day and I want to be nice. <laughs> Honestly, I'm a nice person. If you. You know, praise God, you'll never get to see me in my pajamas. But when I'm in my pajamas, I'm in, I don't even wear pajamas, praise the Lord. Don't let your mind go there. Uh, but I, 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 I'm really a nice person. I, I want to be nice. I want to be loved by you. I mean, I, 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 I just want to be nice. And, you know, for years I was tormented because I would be real nice and I'm really nice. And, and I would get up and I would start to preach a message. The Holy Spirit would come upon me. And I'm telling you, I would hear words come out of my mouth. And I would say, oh, where's that coming from? I'm, I want to be nice. And I'm, I'm like, Arr! we take authority. Shut down the devil. Bar! And, and, and I would go home from church and service and I would get into bed and I would pull the duvet, the quilt up over my head. And I would say, what is going on? And I would go to my wife and I would say, well, 
I think it was a good service today. And my wife would look at me and she would say things like, do you have to say those things? I mean, do you have to say those things? And I would say, oh, I would go back to bed, pull the quilt up over my head. I would go to my mother. I thought, well, she gave birth to me. She's going to be real nice. I go to my mother and my mother would look at me and say, Paul, you know, uh, she's, well, I remember her saying things like, yes, you know, uh, maybe you just let up a wee bit, you know, just, just, uh, just let up a little bit. So I go back to bed, pull the quilt up over my head and, and I said, God, what is going on? And you know what? I got myself to a place where I overread the leading of the spirit. I said, you know what? I'm going to be nice. I'm just going to get up and speak nice messages and, and just love on everybody and, and just, you know, <laughs> I, I love you, you love me. And you know, the church started to grow, but it was growing like a weed. I mean, it was just growing. I'm not talking about good weed. I'm just talking about it was growing like a weed. It was awful. I was miserable. Everybody was happy. Karen was singing in the kitchen. You know, everything was good. And I was miserable. And this went on for a few months. And more and more people came and, and all of these different things. But I'm telling you, one day I got up and said, guys, I got to do this God's way. I can't do this my way. And I can't hold back what the Spirit of God has put on my life. And I have to tell you the truth and tell you what the Spirit of God is saying. I'm telling you, there are a lot of people that clapped and cheered. And there were a lot of people that said, see you in the next round. But you know what? I made a decision then that I was going to do it God's way. Because there was only one way to do this. And it was God's way. And when you do it God's way, you're going to get God's results. And you know what? I never took to bed again. I never pulled the quilt up over my head. And I relished the truth that God wanted to use me in a very unique way to reach humanity. Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, it doesn't matter what God wants you to do. Do what he wants you to do in a way that you will do it with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul. And if you find something coming out of your mouth that you're thinking, I don't know what this is, but I'm going with it. You just just know this, that God is dealing with things. God is sorting things. God is speaking out there in the spirit and he is bringing the enemy's plans to naught. Can I have a big amen? Come on, everybody. This belief for that boldness in the Holy Ghost. Come on, I'll say it again. This belief for the boldness in the Holy Ghost. God doesn't need Mr. Motivator here in Dublin. Amen. He needs somebody that will speak the truth. Bring to naught the plans of the devil. In the name of Jesus. You know what? It's the word of the Lord that splits the rocks. It's a hammer that splits the rocks. It's the word of the Lord that brings mountains low and raises valleys up. It's the word of the Lord that makes crooked places straight. You know, sometimes we just think we just need somebody to be nice to us and rubber by. But you know what we need is somebody that loves us enough to get the devil off us, to get us out of hell, and to get us back on the road to heaven. Come on, everybody. Clap your hands onto Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come on. Things are getting better. Shut it out. Things are getting better. Come on. We don't want to live in a hellish Dublin. We want to live of heaven on earth. We want to see Dublin burn with the fires of heaven and not burn with the fires of hell. We want to see people delivered, set free, seated and clothed and in their right minds. And even if they don't understand what we're saying, we still have to say it. Look at Peter. Peter went from denying Christ to literally saying things on the day of Pentecost that he thought he would never have said. He didn't have the power to say it before Jesus' death. But the moment that he received the power of the Holy Spirit, he spoke in a way that many preachers today would never speak. Do you know what I do? I celebrate that I'm a friend of a man. I'm a friend of a woman that can stand up under the power and the unction of Jesus Christ and begin to speak as bold as Peter under the unction and the power of the Holy Spirit and begin to set things right and to see people delivered and to see people added to the kingdom of God. Let me tell you, when was the last time you stood in the streets of Dublin and preached the gospel of Jesus Christ? I know many of you do, but many of you don't. This man does. He's not in 
this for the money. He's not in this for fame. He's not in this for glory. Listen, if he was in it for fame, he wouldn't say the things that he said. If he was in it for popularity, he wouldn't say the things that he said. If he was in it to grow just the biggest, baddest church in Dublin, he wouldn't say the things that he said. Why does he do the things he does? Because of the leading of the Spirit of God. There's a conviction that lives within him. There's a fire that burns within him. And if you knew what was good for you, you would get this fire burning within you as well. Do you know Peter got into trouble because he stood by the fire. That was right there when Jesus was being put on trial. But when Jesus had the fire burning within him, he didn't mince his words. He told everybody the way it was and he told everybody the way it's going to be. And I'm telling you, people started getting delivered. Do you know what hated him? Religion hated Peter. You know that you've got a spirit of religion when you begin to hate what comes out of your pastor. When you begin to hate what what, what message comes out of him, you know that that spirit of religion is trying to shut the freedom of the spirit down. Well, I declare it in the name of Jesus that I've come to stand with him. I've come to stand with her. And the spirit of religion is not going to shut them down. Give the Lord praise and honor and glory. Come on, all nations. Praise the Lord right now. That spirit of religion is sick. It's sad. It's vicious. It wants to render you useless. It wants to leave you beaten and just literally discarded on the side road of society. It wants us all to be culturally accepted, but we're not supposed to be culturally accepted. We are to be spiritually in tune and spiritually led and spiritually in the authority so that we have the commanding word and final word in our lives. This is a good message. Look at your neighbor and say, things are about to get good around here. I'm going to say it one more time. Things are about to get good around here. I'm going to say it one more time. Things are about to get good around here. It just amazes me that you can just about do anything you want to do today except Christianity. You can go and speak about anything and they will celebrate you. But you know what? You speak anything about the gospel of Jesus Christ, they will say that you are hate speech. They will say that you are not conforming. They will say this, that, and the other thing. What? We are the only one. I went to Birmingham and I say this so respectfully, but right there in the bull ring, I'm telling you, tables and tables of, of, of Muslims standing there proselyting and, and preaching, preaching the Quran, preaching and causing people to conform to Islam. Ladies and gentlemen, we do this now as Christians and we are, we are regarded as hostile. We are regarded as just really just, you know, the dirt on the shoe that should be kicked to the curb and to get out of our road. But when another religion does it, when somebody else does it, it seems that it's okay. But when you begin to look at that and study that just for any length of time at all, you would see that there is something wrong with that picture. You will see that that is just not not natural. That is spiritual. There is something going on behind the scenes in the unseen that is trying to work against the body of Christ. Two groups now that are under tremendous pressure. That is the group called the Jew and the group called the church. It's amazing. The Gentiles, they're on a winning streak, it seems to be. They can do just about anything they want to do and, and everybody wants to accept it and everybody wants to celebrate it and you can say anything and and you can even go to school now and you tell them that you believe that you're a rabbit and you can dress like a rabbit and they have to treat you like a rabbit but I'm telling you you know but you come and say I'm a Christian and I live like a Christian and this is my Bible and I'm going to put my Bible on my desk and I'm going to dress like a Christian I'm going to look like I'm, I'm going to I'm not going to walk like an Egyptian I'm going to walk like a Christian And you will be ridiculed, you will be persecuted, but you can go and be a rabbit. You can sit there at your at your desk and rub your whiskers. You say, you and Pastor John, you're two alike. And everybody has to treat you like that, even put you out a bowl. But somebody needs to tell them they're not a cat. They're they're not a cat. They're a human. A cat did not give birth to them. A human gave birth to them. 
So you can't be a cat just because you choose to be a cat. I can't be black because I choose to be black and walk a certain way. I can't be Chinese if I choose to be Chinese. Well, today, you know what? Call me a Filipino. It's gone quiet in here. What's wrong with Ireland? Well, I'm a leprechaun. But the moment that you say you're a Christian, I believe in Jesus Christ. Now you've got a target on your back. I don't care how nice you are. I don't care how nice you want to be. I don't care how accepted you want to be. Because you have said you are a Christian, something now has changed in society for you. Ladies and gentlemen, that's why he gave us the power of the Holy Spirit. The world has changed, but you are not on your own. Look at your neighbor and say, I am not on my own. You see, when you march down to the Doyle today, you're not marching down there just as a group of people. You know, here we come, you know, with, uh, you know, praise the Lord, Israel, 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 Israel. It's different what's marching down the streets. It may be what seems to be a natural body of people, but it's not just a natural body of people. It is one will set a thousand to flight, two will set ten thousand to flight. What you're doing today is very spiritual. Shut it out. Very spiritual. One more time. Very spiritual. So everybody might be seeing in the natural, but you know, we know in the supernatural, in the unseen realm, that something powerful is going on. And because of your mobilization, amen, to take to the streets and say, you know what? We need our voices to be heard. We need somebody to see that we are not happy with this. And we are standing for Israel. We are pro-Israel. Something in the spirit realm is changing. You are not on your own. It is not a natural thing. You're not out there with placards just trying to, you know, just change people's minds. We're not trying to change people's minds. This is spiritually that uh, 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 changed. It is not thought for thought. It is spiritually changed. Say that with me. It is spiritually changed. And that's what's happening. And so when you get out there, sometimes you go out with your knees knocking. Sometimes you go out there and you think, oh my goodness, what am I doing? But you know what? The more that you do it, it will amaze you. The boldness that begins to rise within you. The more you speak about Jesus, the more boldness comes on your life to speak about Jesus. How many people have found that? You see, we're not supposed to be muffled. We're not supposed to be silenced. We have a voice. We have a message. We have the love of God in our hearts for us. No, for the world. There are broken and, and defeated people that are living in our communities. And each and every one of us has been given a measure of Jesus Christ so that we can reach those around us, so that we can tell them that God loves them and it doesn't have to be the disastrous, tragic way that they are living. There are millions of people, even within the sound of my voice, even within proximity, amen, that are living terrible, tragic existences. They're getting up. They live in the darkness. They sleep in the darkness, even though they have electricity. They just don't know where the answers are. They're doing their best. It's a slippery hole. They don't know how to get out of it. And I'm telling you, they just do the same old, same old, day in, day out, day in, day out with no hope. You see, for us as the church, we have Christ in us, the hope of glory. We have the Bible that gives us all these promises, which are yes and amen. And we know that if we don't like how it is right now, everything is subject to change, that the best is coming and the best is about to manifest in our lives. I want you to shout it out right now. The best is manifesting in my life. You see, I love that your pastors are raised up for more than just a local church. I love that they're raised up to bring change. You see, it gives me tremendous, tremendous joy to know that the enemy cannot do just what he wants to do, unhindered. But yet there were people in the land like you that will stand in the face of the enemy and say, not today, devil. 
Not today in Dublin, not today in Kerry, not today in Cork, not today in Belfast, not today in the north, and not today in the south. If Patrick can do it, we can do it in the mighty name of Jesus. Patrick came by the power of the Spirit and took the gospel through this land. Amen. If he was able to do it then with all the persecution, guess what we can do now, ladies and gentlemen? We can stand in the face of it. I don't believe we're as bad as what it has been in the world yet. There are medieval times, the barbaric times, the barbarians. There were very, very evil days on the earth. And I don't believe that we are there yet. Some people say it like this. I don't, you know, I don't think we've ever been here before. I don't think it's ever been as dark as this before. It's been as dark as this before. There's been dark, 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 very dark times where people's heads, people would have been literally, you know, dismembered, all of those different things. But we are living in dark times. But there is, a what would you say, an awakening that is happening within the body of Christ. There's an awakening. There's an awakening. But you know what? Ours is not to hate people. Ours is the love of God. Even when you hear us minister, it's not hate. It's love. We're reaching. We're reaching for people. We're reaching to to rescue them from hell. We're reaching to rescue them even from belief systems, paradigms, strongholds, and mindsets. We're reaching so that they can be delivered. Why pray? It's the prayers of the saints that, that avail much. It is that heartfelt prayer, amen, that makes tremendous power available, the book of James tells us. Can I ask you a question? Are you praying? Are you praying like everything depends on your prayers? Are you praying prayers of faith and believing (coughs) that God is bringing an immediate change now? What would happen today if an immediate change took place in Dublin? How many people is believing for that? Wave at me right now. What would happen if an immediate change took place today? What would happen if 500 people walked into this church next Sunday? You know, we would think, well, pastor, you know, pastor, well, oh my goodness, you know, oh, that message was a stonker. Pastor preached today. What if 500 people were added to the church because of the truth that Pastor John was speaking? I'm telling you, everybody would be celebrating. Everybody would be like, come on, Pastor John. But you know what? I believe these are the things that you're going to see. These are the things that are going to happen. These are the things which are going to manifest. Amen. It happened in the day of Pentecost. It happened in the early church. And we have every right to expect that it's going to happen today. Because there are people out there that are looking for the truth. (laughs) I'm going to say it again. There are people out there that are looking for the truth. Ladies and gentlemen, the throne from which all grace proceeds. In Israel, it was the mercy seat covering for the ark between the two cherubims. The high priest could approach this only once a year with the blood of atonement. If he transgressed in anything, he would be struck dead. You think we're living in terrible times? I mean, you, you wanted to be a high priest in those days. If he transgressed in anything, he would have been struck dead. His approach was with fear and trembling. The new covenant believers can come boldly to God's throne without fear and trembling. And that daily and at any time of the day, this is the freedom. This is the confidence. This is the liberty of approach that we have been commanded and that we have been given by the Lord, so that we can keep this till the end and come daily, come as many times as we want to, to the throne of grace to obtain help and to receive mercy. I don't know about you, but I'm going to make that happen. I know now, I'm telling you, God has been really ministering to me about this. Paul, you're not coming as much as you should. You should be coming before me expecting an immediate assistance, immediate help. I believe that as I'm ministering this, God is registering this within your heart, that all is well. Things are changing and they're going in the right direction. And no matter how it's been right up to this moment, from this moment, everything is changing. Two blessings that we can expect from God. Number one, as I've said, this word Elios, this mercy, it means pity. It means compassion. It says that we can receive grace to help or support when needed, where needed, and to the extent that it is needed. It is not help for needs, we think, we shall have in the future, but immediate and present needs. I want you to write that down somewhere. It is immediate 
and present needs. As I've said before, it is this faith thing. Amen. And I believe in faith and I believe that the, the just shall live by faith. But sometimes I think that we've got so out there in faith, by faith, that we have nothing going for the immediate. We have nothing going for now. It's like you, you sowed your seed this morning in the offering. It's like, you know, cast your bread upon the waters and you will see it return after many days. Nobody's really believing for an immediate return on a seed sown. But you know what? I've had immediate uh, returns on seed sown. I've sown seed in the offering and by the time I leave for home, I'm telling you, I have received increase and received a harvest. I declare it over you that we're having immediate harvests in Jesus' name. Come on, shout that out. We're having immediate harvests. I mean, we're tithers, right? We're tithing and we're giving unto the Lord. We're giving that tenth of our increase unto the Lord. And he says, the windows of heaven are open and I am pouring you out a blessing. So you know, the tithe is not a bill. The tithe is with our heart. It's our heart saying, I give back to the Lord what is rightfully His. Amen. That is the least that we can do. But what does He say? I'm going to open the windows of heaven. I'm going to pour out a blessing. Do you know what that word is in the Hebrew? It's something like adbli die. It means this, that there is not enough room for you to contain what God wants to do in your life. It is the blessing of increase. It is exceedingly abundantly above all that you can ever ask or think. God does not want to come and just give you just a little touch. God wants to overload you. He is the God of abundance and he wants to abundantly supply. If you believe that, shout a big amen. Come on, everybody, shout it out. Immediate help. Come on, immediate help. Come on, immediate help. How many more minutes do I have, John? How many people give me five more minutes? Just put up your hand if you give me five minutes. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25. <sighs> Some of you like. I got the power. <laughs> I've been singing over this song. I'm telling you, Torin Wells sang it. And uh, I've just been singing and singing and singing and singing and singing. And singing. Everything changes here in the presence of the Lord. Everything changes. I know. You all wish you could sing like me. Praise the Lord. <laughs> it's just amazing. I know. I, sometimes I just have to just get over it that I am me. I mean, it's just... <laughs> It's just amazing. Praise the Lord. Even at 56, I still am amazed that I look in the mirror and I think, wow, such good genes. My teeth are not my own, but they look good. Veneers really help. I remember when I got my veneers. I'm telling you, my lip wasn't big enough to cover my teeth. I remember I'd just been to the dentist. I know you're all like shocked. So vain. He's so vain. <laughs> well, my teeth were small and, you know, I had this dentist that came to me. I was preaching, you know, in a place in America. And uh, I had this dentist and I had believe and I had been talking to Pastor Karn about, you know what, I really need something done with my teeth. And, you know, it wasn't a vanity thing. I just thought people were going to have to look at me. I thought, you know, that when I smiled, at least they would see teeth and, you know, just not see gums or nubs, you know. And uh, so it was part of my, 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 my dialogue with the Lord. And, and I would say to the Lord, I said, Lord, you know, I would, I would really love. And, you know, I, I looked into it. And for every veneer, it was going to be like 1,000, you know. So you can imagine, you know, that was like cha-ching, 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 cha-ching. And before you knew it, you had a car in your mouth. <laughs> But I was ministering away, and, and this, this dentist was in the service, and he, mu he must have really liked what I was saying. Just like what you're doing right now. You're really liking what I'm saying. And he must have really liked it. He says, you know what? Your face is going to be seen around the world. And, uh, you know, he said, I am a dentist, and I would like to fix your teeth. So momentarily, I was like, is it that bad? <laughs> I mean, is it that bad? 
Isn't it amazing how we get defensive? All of a sudden, something we've prayed for, and it manifests, and we come like, what's wrong with my teeth? <laughs> I mean, you're so brutal, vicious, talking to me about my, my teeth. I have a complex. He says, no, I'd like you to bring you into my uh, practice. I'd, I'd, like to, I'd actually like to give you a nice set of teeth. So I said, well, thank you very much. Actually, I said it was a prayer project of mine. And, and he said, well, come on. And I went that week, and I said to Pastor Karn, and Pastor Karn was like, praise the Lord, answer to prayer, let's, let's go. So anyway, I, I didn't know all it was. I actually made inquiries to see that he actually was a good dentist. <laughs> I, mean, I made inquiries to actually know that, can he do this? And... Uh, always great and he has tremendous reviews and things like that and of course it came my time and you know he worked at my teeth and all those different things and he 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 gave me a very nice a very what you see now okay well before i got there i actually met friends in starbucks just after all the teeth being put in and this lady uh you know her husband and a lady friends of ours and uh, she saw me coming in, and she says, what have you done? Because my lip was up here, and my teeth was down here, and my top lip hadn't stretched yet over the top. And I was talking like this here. I said, is it so noticeable? I could hardly talk. When I preached, I preached for several months, like when I would say, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. I would say to Pastor Karn, I says, what have I done? I, I'm, I'm, I'm ruined. I can't, I can't. I'm... Then I come home to Balamina, and of course, you know, I've been to America. And of course, you know what everybody's like, you know, here it's like, oh, gone to America. America's gone to his head, and here he is back with teeth. And I'm standing up the first time back in America with the new teeth, and Back in Balamina, and one of our friends, they says, Pastor's got his teeth done! Anyway, praise the Lord. I don't know why I told you all that. But you know what? I'm all for. If you can fix it, go ahead. If you can tie it back, tie it back somewhere. If you can hide it, hide it somewhere. <laughs> I'm on a flight to Turkey this afternoon to get a hair transplant. Turkey doing the seven churches and with uh, Pastor Rick Renner. And I'm telling you, they were telling us the tour guide was on the, how did I get into this? Anyway, the tour guide was telling us, you know, if you need your teeth done, you need a hair transplant, you need anything done, cut out, cut off, put in, Turkey is the place to do it. So, of course, I've laughed for years, you know, that one of these days I'm going to get a hair transplant. <laughs> It's just a joke. I will never get a hair transplant. And I'm not even believing for hair. I just, it just never comes up. I, I just, you know, I mean, praise the Lord. Slicks the way it is, baby. That's just the way it is. Praise the Lord. And, you know, my wife likes it. I like it. And too bad. But I'll tell you, you know, they, they would try and come and sell you things in Turkey. As you know, you know, you go to different countries and they're trying to sell everything. And every time they would come <laughs> Every time, you see, I can't laugh. You see that? Uh, every time they would come and they would try and sell me something, I said, no, I'm saving my money for a hair transplant. <laughs> and they would look at me. They weren't happy at all. They just wanted to sell what they had. And I would talk to them about a hair transplant. And anyway, I guess you had to be in there. It was funny at the time. Praise the Lord. Anyway, seven steps to obtaining help. I have then 20 steps to, and then I have 40 steps 
And once I finish the 40 steps, we'll go to the Israel prayed. Praise the Lord. It's very quick. Listen to this. Maybe is the piano player here? Praise the Lord. There you go. Praise the Lord. Can we put our hands together for the piano player this morning? Come on, clap. Come on, clap. Hallelujah. Give us a big smile. Did you get your teeth done as well? Oh, praise the Lord. <laughs> Isn't it good to laugh? Praise the Lord. People go and get stuff done and they're trying to hide it like nobody knows you got it done. And you come out with lips like this. And you're saying, is it noticeable? Um, just a little. <laughs> I mean, I mean, you get your eyes done and you've got that surprised look and you're thinking, is it noticeable? Not really. <laughs> if you're going to do it, just do it and laugh and, and have a big time with it. Praise the Lord. Ask, ask the people that you're working with, can you get commission? Pastor John, I'm sorry for wrecking this service. Don't you just love Pastors John and Joanna Hearn? Put your hands together one more time for them. Come on, clap. Come on, clap. Come on, clap. I love this couple. I love their family. I love them. Amen, and I celebrate. You know, Paul said, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you. That's how we live. That's how we live. Hallelujah. You know, friends, you don't find them in a lucky bag. Some of you are too young for that. But when we were growing up, you would go to the shop and you would buy a lucky bag and it would... You were so excited because everything in it was going to be a surprise. But friends are given to you by God. And you get what you sow. If you sow friendship and love, and you sow confidence, sow strength, sow compassion, sow mercy, guess what you're going to get? Friends of the same caliber. Like breeds like. Hallelujah. Number one, today we have to recognize that there is a meeting place with God and it is called the throne of God's grace. That invitation stands to every single one of us. Make the appointment, receive the invitation and go boldly before the throne of grace and receive the help that you need because help is ready. Help is available. And help is on its way. Number two, we have to be conscious that this meeting place of God is made possible through not what we have done, but through what Jesus did, the atoning blood of Christ. Access was given to each and every one of us. So why not go ahead? and receive the access into the place where dreams come true. Number three, obedience to coming before the throne of grace. We just can't put it off anymore. We can't just say that we don't have time. We can't just say, you know, that, well, you know, the day got away from me, and, but yet you still needs, you still need answers to prayer. You still need things to happen. You still need family to be helped. You still need to put food on the table. You still need a job. You still need a house. You still need a car. He said, come boldly before. What's he saying? Just be obedient. All you have to do is make a decision, make a choice to come boldly before, before me. Come to the throne. It's a place where answers are received. And number four, to call upon the Lord for mercy 
and grace to help in time of need. Do you know, it's just a simple communication. Father, I know you know all about this. I come boldly before your throne today. I heard this baldy preacher with big teeth, and he said that there was an invitation that was given to me to come boldly before your throne. Actually, Father, he gave me a scripture, Hebrews 4, 16. And I'm not really used to coming and demanding things, and I'm not really used to coming and asking for things, and I'm not really used to coming and talking about this. I really just suffer silently, and I just really just get on with life, Father, because there are many people like that. They'll pray about everything except themselves. They'll pray about everything except some of the things that the Father wants to get in on. And so when you pray like this, when you just come simply like this, just simply, Father, I just bring my children before you today. I come boldly before your throne. Father, you know how concerned I am about Johnny. I haven't liked some of the things that I've seen recently, and I don't know what to say because I don't, I don't want to make things worse. How many people knows that the Father is into that? He knows that as a mother, he knows as a father, that you don't want to upset the whole house. You don't want to just run off at the mouth and, you know what, make things worse than what they already are. So the Father goes to work. He goes to work in your heart. What's he going to work in your heart with? He's going to work in your heart with grace, with peace, with patience. He reminds you of a scripture, great shall be the peace and the undisturbed composure of your children. He gives you another scripture, that your children will be mighty on the earth. What's he doing? He's reminding you of his precious promises. You see, that's well-timed help because your mind, your mind is thinking in all the worst case scenarios. What's happening? Have they gone into bad company? They're not acting like they used to act. Where did Johnny go? What happened to my wee Johnny? He's growing up. But these are the things that we're supposed to talk to the Lord about. These are the things that we can talk to God, come boldly before His throne to receive grace, to receive help, instruction. So that if we can talk to a God of mercy, then mercy works in our heart also. And that's what He's talking about. Because mercy is part of us all. Because if it's in the vine, it's in the branch. In Jesus' precious name. Then he tells us about this boldness of speech, the boldness to approach in verse 16. We don't come like, I wonder. We come boldly before the throne of Christ. But you say, Pastor Paul, you don't know what I've done. You don't know how I've lived. Well, I told everybody about Peter last night. Look at Peter. He denied the Lord. He said he would never deny him, but he did. But yet after the resurrection of Christ, who was one of the first people, Peter, people, people that Jesus went to talk to? Peter. He went and sorted it with Peter, told Peter everything was okay before he ever went to talk to the rest of the disciples. What does the Father want us to do? regardless of what we did last night. Because I know there's somebody here, I know there's somebody listening, that last night wasn't your best night. It's inevitable that there's at least somebody somewhere did something that they know that they shouldn't have done. Because you know, God's not holding you over a barrel. What he's saying is, come back to me, come to me, get over what you've done. Just simply repent, ask for forgiveness, and come boldly before my throne. What are you coming boldly before the throne to ask? For help. Help me, strengthen me, strengthen me that I never do that again. What will God do? He'll give you immediate help. You'll get over that breach. You'll get over that moment. There's no judgment. He's not putting you down. He's not setting you free. He's already delivered you, set you free, and he's brought you to himself. Do you know a scripture that you must never forget? Is that nothing can separate you from the love of God. Neither height nor depth, principality or power. You belong to Christ. You have been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. You have been washed and cleansed and separated. And Colossians tells me that you have been transferred out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of His dear Son and His love. And there's no transfer back. 
you were transferred out. Can I have a big amen? My life, my dealings, my future has nothing to do with the devil, but it's everything to do with the Father because I will live with him for eternity. Ladies and gentlemen, as I close this today, he says, present your needs with fervency and earnestness. In other words, make it clear, make it plain. Don't be coming up just old mealy-mouthed and, well, Father, I, I just, well, if you could, if you wouldn't mind. You know, here in this country, we're so apologetic for everything. We always think, say things like, well, if it's not too much trouble and if you wouldn't mind. And we're always apologizing for asking somebody to do something. But yet somebody's prayed over here for God to use them. And then we apologize for using them. We have to get over this and become bolder and become, you know what, just more tenacious in our lives. Can I have a big amen? How many people believe that today is going to change everything in your life? So many of you have needs. So many of you have things that you need help with. Do you know what we try to do? We try to tell people what we need. But the Bible never told us to tell people what we need. The Bible told us and tells us to come before the Lord and to present the need there. As I close, it's just a simple statement. Faith is the answer. You see, when we come before God, we have to believe that He is God and that He is the rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. Today is just a simple decision. As pastor comes, he leads people to Christ today. It leads you into a great place for this afternoon, for this evening, for your new week. Just make a simple decision. Just bow your head with me right now. Just bow your heart. Close your eyes just for two minutes. You know, we've laughed in this service. I've said some things that maybe caused your ear to perk up. But what I really wanted to get to was your heart. How's it going? How's it really going? How is your life? Be honest. Just take two minutes. Be honest. Is there stuff that you need help with? Because I know there's stuff in my life I need help with. Sometimes we're wondering who I could get to help me with this. But yet, our first port of call is the Father. That's where we come boldly before the throne of grace. That mercy, Elios in the Greek, that mercy has said in the Hebrew, that covenant that's been extended to each and every one of us affords us immediate answers. My prayer for you today is that you'll go boldly before the throne of grace to receive help right when you need it. Say this with me today. I believe that as a child of God, I have access to the throne of God. Today, I make a decision to present my needs to the Father by faith, in faith, believing for immediate results. I believe that as the spirit of faith is working in my heart and in this place, everything changes today in Jesus' precious name. If you believe that, give the Lord a mighty amen today. Come on, clap our hands. And this receive our pastor back today in Jesus' name. Come on, this clap for Jesus. It's so wonderful being with you all.